Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and I uh, just downloaded Migo, which is a uh, lightweight Linux distribution meant for netbooks and uh, other portable devices. It's uh, sort of born from uh, the Mamo Linux project with Nokia N900 and similar devices, and the Mobilin Linux project. Uh, it's especially optimized to work on netbooks with Intel Atom processors. And you'll see it boots pretty quickly here, even though I'm actually loading it from a USB flash drive. Uh, you can also install it to a hard drive and it should load even faster. Um, the user interface, very responsive, very snappy, a uh, lot of sort of nice animations here as you flip from screen to screen. But let's go over a little bit of uh, what you find here in uh, Migo 1.0. And keep in mind, I am running it from a USB flash drive. Some of the uh, features might not work unless you install it to a hard drive. So on the front page here, the uh, My Zone, you see appointments if you have appointments in your calendar and tasks. Um, there's a welcome video that you can watch here. Down on the side, you've got a media player link, uh, web browser, which is Chromium, the Linux version of uh, Google Chrome. Actually, Google Chrome came out uh, with a full version uh, just the other day. I'm guessing that will be built into future builds. Chromium was sort of the open source uh, pre-release version. Uh, Migo Help and Mail. And just a little cute icon over here. It doesn't actually do anything. Um, let's go from right to left here. You can see your battery meter, uh, the time and date, um, networks, whether you're connected or not, Bluetooth, devices, media, internet, people, status, applications, and zones. Uh, first, let's go ahead and connect to the internet. So let's go ahead and connect to my home network here. Let's not show the password. And connect. So you'll see it says associating, and it should be working in the background. While it does that, I'll show you a couple of other things here. Under devices, um, you've got information about your battery, how much storage space is free, uh, volume, and links to your documents, downloads, pictures, music, video, and trash bin. Uh, so let's open one of those up and sort of see what it looks like. Yeah, pretty simple file browser. Now in order to get back, you just sort of go to the top and click, and it opens up the taskbar or whatever, the panel here, I guess. And you can go back to the front page or others. Zones area will actually show you all the different windows you have open. So you'll notice there's no running taskbar in the bottom of the screen or anything. There's just uh, these zones that you can switch back and forth between. So say I want to open a web browser. Now we are connected to the internet. So let's open a browser window. You see, launching applications isn't quite instantaneous, so while everything seems very nice and snappy, uh, it's not exactly instantaneous. And I do find it kind of odd that you've got this large bar over the top that says Chromium, um, when Google Chrome is known for taking up very little screen real estate. But look how much space it is before you even get to the uh, content. Um, but you see, web pages load pretty nicely. Works pretty much the way you would expect. You can open a new tab. Um, Flash does work out of the box, so you can go to YouTube, you can go to Hulu, other websites, and watch videos. So that works out fine, and you can use Alt-Tab to switch between open uh, windows. And if I go back here and look at zones, you'll now see I have two zones open. Let's see if we can uh, make that three. So in the applications area, you've got favorite applications on the side, but then you can also click for accessories, games, internet, media, etc. Uh, so let's open a calculator. And you can see it sort of opens full screen, even though it doesn't take up the full screen. Uh, let's see what's in the office area. Let's open a calendar. The calendar is actually pretty nice looking. So, yeah, I like this calendar a lot. And you can change week view, agenda view, sort of a day view, uh, month view, and so forth. And now, when we go back to zones, you'll see we've got four zones open. Um, let's take a quick look over here at status. This, uh, you need to add web accounts in order to have it work. We can look at people, and you can add uh, instant messenger contacts. For some reason, it looks like it has lost my wireless connection, oh, and now it's reconnected. Don't really know what just happened there. 
Uh, internet, it'll show you your favorite pages, uh, browser tabs that are currently open. Media, there's no media on here at the moment, but I'll just show you what the uh, uh, media player looks like. So you've got a music player here. Uh, doesn't seem to have a video option, or maybe it just doesn't have any video loaded at the moment. And again, go back to zones, and now we've got five zones open. So, you know, it, it looks um, you know, it's a little bit like a cross between almost a smartphone application, smartphone uh, operating system, and a desktop operating system. Uh, everything opens in full screen. You don't have uh, widgets. You don't have uh, uh, multiple windows open on the same screen. But um, and there's no taskbar per se across the bottom that shows you a list of running applications, um, but it can run full-fledged Linux applications. Uh, there's something called the Mego Garage where you should be able to download and install additional applications. Um, as I mentioned, I wasn't able to do that here, but I think that might be because I'm using the um, uh, live USB, meaning I'm running from a USB stick, it's not installed to the hard drive. Uh, but let's see if there's anything different here. So Abbey Word and Numeric, these are not installed by default, but one's a word processor, the other's a spreadsheet app. And if I click on it and try to install it, it just doesn't work. Um, but it does give you a lot of neat information. You get some screenshots, uh, description of the product, and so forth. You can go into System Tools also to manage your applications. And this will let you uh, uninstall applications that are currently installed, for example. Or search for applications. So it's a, it's a nice looking little manager. And there's a button to update the entire system, change your software catalogs, uh, analyze your disk usage. So, you know, some neat, neat tools built right in, works right out of the box. So if you're looking for something that's, uh, you know, it's Linux-based, but it's very easy to use, um, doesn't take a, there's not a very high learning curve, I don't think. It's a little bit different from Windows, but it really shouldn't take anybody very long to figure out how to use Mego. Um, I think it's, I think it's neat. Um, you know, it might be something that you might want to consider dual booting with your uh, Windows installation instead of uh, replacing Windows with. Um, but, you know, they have released version 1.0, which means that uh, the folks behind Mego think that it's uh, relatively stable at this point. It's still early in the in the Mego days. Um, you know, I'm not sure that I would switch to it full time, but it's, you know, it's pretty snappy and responsive. And if you're mostly looking for a way to boot your system very quickly, get online using the Google Chrome web browser, uh, supports Flash, supports most websites, um, th th this will do it. Um, when you want to log off, you get a little, you hit the power button and you get a would you like to turn off now? And uh, if you don't decide, I'll turn off in 25 seconds. It started off at 30, but it sort of counts down. I can dismiss that. So it gives you a nice little warning there. And let's turn it off and say goodbye. This is Brad Linder for Lilliputing and the first look at Mego version 1.0 on the MSI Wind U135.